I've reset some of number one, which is some more material that came off the moulding, and they're really sort of nice fat samples, very deep. So I'm just putting them up on the back. So how do you prepare the paint samples? I have a big uh, silicon rubber mould uh, with this sort of shape in them, and 20 at a time. Um, I have to pour half of the um, block, so I've got a hard yeah. uh, surface to rest them on, so they, they end up halfway in between. So I lay down all the halves, um, and then I take the samples out of the bag and take a look at them and try and find the best part of the samples. Yeah. Um, quite often need to cut them down to mm. get to the right part, and then I lay that right up against the edge within the mould. Right. Um, glue it into place so that it doesn't start floating away when I do the pouring um, and then I pour the other half of the resin yeah. um, after a while I also do the, the labels as well um, and then when that's set uh, with the catalyst so it, it normally takes 48 hours to get a decent set and then I have a big um, grinding machine uh, with, where I can swap out different uh, sandpapers in it um, so I polish them when they're wet um, and uh, go from about 600 grade up to about 4000 grade of sandpaper um, and then just to try and get as smooth a surface as possible so that I get a, the best image I can in the microscope. So what's the oil for? Um, it fills in a lot of tiny gaps which cause reflection in the um, in the resin to give you a really lovely sort of clear view that you're looking through. Right. Okay. And set it up so you can see. Zoomed in. Oh, wow. Get another layer. And, uh, and tell me about that layer. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the famous way. sanded layer, um, where you can see in a sort of very neat line the sand sort of laid along this layer rather than being too jumbled up in there. Right. And that's the layer we think was a texture layer. How many layers in is that? Is that sort of seven? That, I think that was um, scheme 11, as far as I remember. Right. Um, so, yeah, these are all. So, that's the very earliest one there. We've just got a trace of a primer yeah. down at the bottom. Um, the microscope has a very shallow depth of field, so uh, I'm just about to see that there. Oh, yeah. And then um, the dark lines are. Um, sometimes a little breaks in the sample and then sometimes it's dirt but further up here and um, we've got some varnish layers where it goes thicker so, so these ones here which is where we think the graining was right. so you say that was varnish or grain what that you say the thick line was yeah, varnish. that's varnish, um, so it doesn't look clear. Mm. It, it goes dark um, when you look at it in the microscope. Okay. Um, so these more layers of sand here, or was that just a random bit of dirt, do you think? Uh, yeah, sometimes it's just um, little bits of inclusions and silica and stuff. That's got a bit of uh, sort of a red oxide in there, and in that part of um, just a little bit of stone in there. Um, but yeah, quite from the pigment part, you can see pigment particles in there, but they're generally, because it's um, of the colour it is, uh, they're quite rough, sort of earth pigments and mm. um, various inclusions in there. So, oh. And then we get more recent, we'll go up to the top. <coughs> Let me focus. Oops. Should be able to see that. I'm just going to. So I'll just show you the more recent layers in a second. So yeah, you can see the difference um, 
between that the sort of darker layers yeah and and how it's always been more of a stony color right up until recent Very times recent, yeah. so those are three separate layers there aren't there um, rather than one yeah the so primer. i think this paler one is a priming layer for that top one there um, and then again this here is a dark layer and you can just see that sort of dark red there so generally you're sort of looking at um a primer under, or undercoat layer and then the top layer which the undercoat is quite often not exactly the same color as the top coat and then since then it sort of before then it was stone right back to yeah, obviously with the graining layers, so the yeah. although you, you're seeing the main body of the layer as, yeah. as pale because of the very, very thin sort of pigments over the top, um, it ends up being dark, as you know, um, from what Ian's working on. Yeah. But the layers themselves, because they're varnishes and very thin <clears throat> layers, then they're sort of quite hard to see in a cross-section. Right. But you can sort of see them in the, in the centre there.